we were going to minister to them. That's not what happened. We got ministered to. They they demonstrated more a love that I had had never experienced before in in, in the U.S. They were. I, I wish I could explain their happiness. They had. They gave us everything in their kitchen for that one meal, and they were. They were so happy. The kids outside playing in the ditches, their little cars that they made by themselves with their own hands. Ha- happiest kids I've ever seen in my life. So it was joy. It was a, it was a joy. It was it was deeper than a happiness. And that was man for me high school. I mean that was <laughs> that was decades ago, and that still has impacted me like it was yesterday to see. The, the the joy in their eyes and the depth of those smiles and their spirit of giving and gratefulness that we were there and that they they had something to give to us which again is is crazy and I can I've never I've never forgotten that so that is my intro into one of the most powerful exercises I've done this year in the area of gratefulness and gratitude. Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you've hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. What is going on, super duper leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, and world changers? I hope you are doing amazing. Super excited to share this episode. Now, you may be watching this on my Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, and some of our different Facebook groups, or even listening on our EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. And this is literally one of the most powerful exercises on emotional intelligence and emotional health that I have done this year in 2020. And I have done a lot of emotional work and growth in 2020. And this has been super powerful. And I want to share it with you all in hopes it'll impact you all like it's impacted me. First, let me tell you a story. I went on a missions trip. How many, how many of you all have ever, have ever been on a missions trip before? or traveled overseas outside of the United States. So we went on a missions trip at, you know, when I was in high school to the Dominican Republic. And I grew up in a small rural farming community. We had a thousand people in my hometown. We eventually moved to a, a much larger city for me a town of about 20,000, <laughs> which I know for some of you all is still, is still, you know, probably a, a suburb, it, you know, and uh, so I grew up in a small town, rural Illinois, Midwest, soybeans, cornfields, wheat fields, cattle, you know, lots of farmers and stuff. And we went on this uh, high school, one of the, a bunch of high schoolers went on this mission trip to Dominican Republic to a small village, small town called La Vega. And, you know, there was, I don't know, maybe 20, 30, 40 of us that went on this this missions trip. I I was raised speaking Spanish, but even still I wasn't, I I was fluent in conversational Spanish, but not in like, you know, if you you asked a specific field or area, I would have been struggle boss on. So I was nervous. I was nervous. Well, as it worked out, I ended up being the translator because I knew Spanish, I guess, better than everyone else. I ended up being the translator. 
Well, here's what happened. So we show up in La Vega. We're nervous. You know, I, I obviously I was in high school. I wasn't a preacher. I didn't have a background in theology or or ministry or anything like that. And we're going to share. We're going to start some vacation Bible studies and some some sports activities and stuff for some of the children in the in the village and tell them about, you know, our particular faith background and our, our relationship with, the, with Jesus and, and, and with the Lord. And man, I was nervous. I was terrified. How, you know, how do I break the ice? How do I, how am I going to approach these folks? How am I going to, how's this going to go? Are they going to accept us, not accept us? What do they think of us gringos? You know what I mean? The, 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 the you know, these little white kids in the, from the middle of, 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 of Illinois, the middle of the United States, like what, you know, how's this going to go? And we were, were a few of us, a group of, of kids in my little patrol, <laughs> my little patrol of high school students, there's about three of us, and man, we're nervous. They're dirt streets. Kids are playing in the, in the ditches and with, with, with toys that they built their own. Literally a shoebox with two pencils, one pencil in the front, one pencil in the back, and soda pop tops, the, the, the metal soda pop tops stuck on both sides of the pencils as wheels. They had a little car with a string and that was their, that was their toy, right? They pulled these little cars around. And, and so we're like, man, we're nervous. We start walking down this dirt road and their homes that are, that are along the road, these small little one, maybe two room homes that have no, I mean, they have windows and doors, but there are no actual glass windows or doors in the doors or windows. Now, this is a long time ago. La Vega may have obviously changed since then, but the part of La we were, it was, you know, um, very meager. I'm about to tell you how meager it was. So, so here's what happened. So we start walking down this dirt road, and no kidding, the first house we passed that saw us walk by, they came running out of their house, grabbed us by the arms, pulled us inside their house. They don't know us from Adam's house cat. They pulled these strangers from, from the U.S., Midwest, into their house, and they pull the three or four things in their entire house in terms of their kitchen off the shelf, and they make us some rice and beans. All, that was that was all the food they had in their house. They put it all, boom, and made this amazing, amazing meal. They gave us everything. And I thought, wow. Like, I mean, it was, it was overwhelming. We were going to minister to them. That's not what happened. We got ministered to. They they demonstrated more a love that I had, had never experienced before in, in, in the U.S. They were, I, I wish I could explain their happiness. They, had, they gave us everything in their kitchen for that one meal. And they were, they were so happy. The kids outside playing in the ditches, their little cars that they made by themselves with their own hands. Ha happiest kids I've ever seen in my life. So it was joy. It was a, it was a joy. It was it was deeper than a happiness. And that was man for me high school. I mean that was <laughs> that was decades ago, and that still has impacted me like it was yesterday. To see the 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 joy in their eyes and the depth of those smiles and their spirit of giving and gratefulness that we were there and that they they had something to give to us which again is is crazy and I, again, i've never i've never forgotten that so that is my intro into one of the most powerful exercises i've done this year in the area of gratefulness and gratitude so as you all know 2020 has been no joke for some it has literally been brutal but it's been no joke probably for all of us. And it's had ups and downs. Uh, they're, they're, you know, we're getting all kinds of different information, different sources, who to trust, 
who not to trust, what is someone's angle, the social media angle, the politics angle, all these different things, Med- medical side. Uh, you know, C- Kathy and I personally have gone through lots of ups and downs, not in our relationship, but just with a number of different things that we've been going through as a couple, a lot of emotional ups and downs. It's This year has been filled uh, with fear, anxiety, uncertainty, disappointment, stress, grief, frustration, unpredictability, inconsistency, helplessness in some cases, lack of control, pain, hurt, injury, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual pain and injury. Um, it's been it's been a no joke year. And so why why gratitude? Why gratefulness? Why thankfulness? Well, there are six things that I feel gratefulness does for us, thankfulness does for us. Number one, it shifts our perspective. It shifts our perspective. And I've got five awesome action steps. Stay to the end because there's some powerful action steps that I think will be very helpful um, with this gratefulness concept. So number one, gratefulness shifts our perspective. Number two, it allows us and helps us take our eyes off ourselves. A lot of times for me, when I get fearful or anxiety or stress, who am I thinking about? Me. I'm thinking about me. Gratefulness helps to 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 take my eyes off of myself, you know, and look from a different perspective, a different lens. Number three, in my opinion, gratefulness and thankfulness changes the state of our heart. It changes the state of our heart. Now, how and what's the physiology? I have no idea, but it's just in my from my perspective. It, it changes the state of our heart. Number four, it reveals things about us by paying attention to what we're grateful for. It reveals things about us by paying attention to what we're grateful for. Number five, I feel like it's an anti-selfishness medicine. It's an anti-selfishness medicine. Number six, from an EQ perspective, from an emotional intelligence, emotional health perspective, it increases, being thankful and grateful increases self and social awareness. And then the exercises that I'm about to share with you will help to increase self and social management. So really this area is going to help grow your all of your emotional health and emotional intelligence together if you guys apply some of these action steps. So those are six things for what I feel gratefulness does for us. And there's probably a lot bigger list, but that's the list I, I, I'm sharing right now. So, so five action steps to apply and implement gratefulness and thankfulness in your life. Number one, Begin a gratefulness journal. Begin a thankfulness journal. Make a list of all the things you're thankful for in 2020. And that is the exercise that I did. So just a few days ago, I was kind of like, man, I'll put my feels a little bit, processing processing some stuff, you know, maybe kind of leaning a little bit to some negative stuff. But then I thought, wait a second. Let me think about so my 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 gratefulness journal is labeled God's provision. God's provision, specifically I'm doing 2020. And I'm on number 56 right now. All the different ways that God has, that, I'm, that I can think of, that God is blessing or has blessed us this year specifically. And man, it was, it's was it been such a powerful exercise. Going Just doing that exercise and realizing, man, look at all these different things that I have to be thankful for amidst and in spite of this kind of crazy year that we've had. So number one, begin a gratefulness journal. Number two, make three entries a day in your gratefulness journey for a journal for what you're thankful for. Just three. Doesn't have to be 15, 25, doesn't have to be for 35 minutes. Three things. Keep it simple. The easier and more simple the habit, the easier and simpler it's going to be to implement and, and create to be a long-term habit. For three, message three people right now that you're thankful for just send them a quick message hey frank shelly francis you know scott man just want to thank you thank you for when you reached out to me you know a couple months ago and you prayed for me thank you for sending me that one that thank you card from you know when we got together and had dinner whatever just three people and tell them just one reason why you're thankful for them. 
Uh, and, and here's the thing, pay attention to how it makes you feel to give and in some cases maybe even receive those thankfulness messages. How does it make you feel to give and receive? Number four, make thankfulness a part of your family culture. Make thankfulness and gratefulness a part of your family culture. Everyone shares three things at each meal for what they're thankful for. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And have it make you know be different every time so you're not you don't get brain lazy and just say the same three things every day. I mean at every meal. So make it different each time and document that list, right? Have someone in the family document the list, write down what everyone's thankful for. Review those gratefulness lists monthly, quarterly, annually, and to be able to look back and see all the things that you're thankful for for that year is would be a powerful exercise. And number five, observe how life and perspective changes once you begin the practice of gratitude. Hopefully that encouraged you. Maybe tag some folks that and friends that or or, let, or share this episode with some friends that you're grateful for and that you'll you're thankful for. And let's go into 2021 with a habit and a culture of gratitude. And remember that emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. Have an awesome day. God bless you.